Rock on the God of Love. This is Will Sanchez. Thank you for tuning in. This is a very special episode of God of Run. My special guest today is Michelle Patterson from the Galloway Running Team. Michelle is one of my longest running buddies. I'm excited to catch up with Michelle. Thank well, you for having me. It's a pleasure. <laughs> Michelle, let's go back in time. Let's go back. Yes, because back in 2004, I believe, yes, it was. I did my second marathon with team and training. I did the one before it. I had so much fun. I came back as a mentor. And you were on a different, uh, you, you were with the team, it was a different group, I believe. Right. So, so we got a chance to right. obviously meet because we trained together with the great coach, well, Ramon Bermo. Yes. And I believe his assistant was Michael Conway. Yes, it was. And I think the third one was a Christine Manning. Christine was my uh, running coach. Yes, yes. 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 How did you discover team training? How did you get involved back in that time? So interestingly enough, I remember getting a, a postcard in the mail for the, from the Lymphoma Leukemia Society. Didn't pay attention to it. Junk mail, left it on the table. And randomly, the card ended up in my bathroom. And uh, on a Thursday, I went in and I saw it. And I was like, OK, it's been here for a while. Let me throw it out. It was the last day that the Informal Leukemia Society team in training was having an orientation at four o'clock. And I figured I was home. I was in between jobs. And I figured I'd just go check it out. For whatever it's worth, I've never run before, never knew I had an interest in running. But I figured, eh, I'll go. It was the last opportunity. And so I went to that orientation. It's in Brooklyn. I think it was in the basement of a church or something like that. And um, I got there and I vaguely remember. Uh, so there was cookies and there was uh, refreshments, coffee. It was an evening uh, situation, but the nicest group of people. And then I was invited to come for a, a, like a complimentary run that Saturday. First one that I did was in Prospect Park because the meet was in Brooklyn and that's why I went. It was convenient for me to get there. So we had that first run, I think it was a mile and a half on a Saturday morning. I knew nothing about running. So I got dressed in my sweatpants and my sweatshirt and the sneakers that I had at home showed up. Everyone was just so enthusiastic. Everyone was just so welcoming. And I ran. And after that one and a half mile run, I think we met at maybe eight o'clock in the morning. I slept the rest of that Saturday. Didn't wake up until Sunday. Uh, was Coach Ramon heading the team at that time at the what yes. was there at Prospect Park? Yes, Coach Ramon was there, Christine was there, and I think I remember my mentor was Allison because the team in training has coaches and they have mentors. So Christine was my coach and Allison was my had, uh, yes eight or nine people they were responsible for. So I had yeah. eight or nine people, but, but we met in uh, Central Park. Yes, we did. Well, at that time. The group was huge. It was a so huge group. They had to split it into, into, uh, into Brooklyn. And I think later on, they also included the Bronx as yes. a separate site because at one time we just took over Central Park. Yes, we did. For, for, I think the continuation of once the trainings began, trainings happened in Central Park, but our first meetup was in Prospect Park. Yes, yeah. yes. So they were already planning ahead yes. that they couldn't have every, everything in. Uh, in the Central Park, so uh, I, I know now they, they split it at least three or four boroughs. Wow. Because it's so, it's so popular. Yes. Okay, so that's interesting. So a lot of people get interested in the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society uh, because it, it, it's, it's trying to find a, a advance a cure for the disease. And so usually you sign up for a season, usually there's an honoree right. that everybody, you know, is supporting. And they tell their story about their overcoming cancer. cancer. A lot of people run because either a family member or they know somebody that's fighting the disease. But in your case, you said 
I, I want to try this running thing. I just wanted to try this running thing. And uh, matter of fact, so uh, there was a fundraising component to it. And um, I decided I wasn't even going to fundraise. I would just pay. To, I think it was at the time two thousand five hundred dollars because I really wanted to, to give. I you know I would consider myself an introvert, so I didn't think I would have the courage to ask for donations. But I made a contribution anyway, and I figured, hey, the most if I would pay for a personal trainer, it would probably cost that much. So I was you know very enthusiastic about giving the donation. Yes. Right. So you went from zero to twenty six point two. Yes, I, think I the did. Training was like twelve or fourteen or yes. sixteen weeks, something like that. So I remember it's where I lost my first toenail. Didn't know that that could happen, but um, after that first run, because obviously I was wearing the wrong shoes, didn't know anything about anything about running, didn't know about wicker, didn't know that you needed special clothing. I just got up and I ran. <laughs> well, luckily they have clinics yes, where you went to the shop. Absolutely. Clinic, the All the I clinics. Never learned all the I learned about toe box. I learned a lot about running and the apparatus. I just figured, you know, what's the worst that can happen? And then the worst happened, but well, it was uphill from there. Well, obviously this has a happy ending because you're sitting here yes. today. <laughs> Almost 20 years later. Nine, 19 years later. 19 years later. Yeah. Okay. That's fantastic because you got a lot of support. Yeah. Because it's your first time. The people were encouraging you. Um, you were never left behind, even though it was tough because, you know, you're in a park. But yes. luckily, Central Park or even Prospect Park, it's a loop. So you can't get lost. <laughs> well, I did get lost. And I think that's that's kind of how I met you because... Running in the park, and there's a lot of people running in Central Park in the evenings. Yep. And I think the uh, team and training runners wore like a lime green uh, jacket. That's right. And I was I was a slow runner. I still am a slow runner, back of the packer. But I'm following the person in the lime green jacket. And all of a sudden, I'm thinking, wait a minute. Why aren't they looking back to check for me? And then I realized I had gotten somehow straight into a different group. But I distinctly remember that Ramon, and it was you and Ramon, that came back. And I figured if I stand here and I wait, somebody's going to realize that <laughs> I'm not with the group. And luckily, I think it was you, Ramon, and Christina came back and found me. So I did get lost in Central Park. And that's when I realized I have to focus a little bit more because not everybody who's running belongs the same, to the same group. So that was my I got lost story. But the not being left behind, it was one of the first times that I realized that running was not only about running and training for a marathon or training for a race, but the camaraderie that happened with team and training and the sense of purpose and sense of uh, commitment to each other. And that's the first time that the phrase, leave no runner behind. But that was the first time that I realized that somebody cared. And so I showed up week after week because I thought these people care. And so that was my, I got lost wow. story. So how did the New Jersey Marathon turn out for you? It was horrible. <laughs> <laughs> but the weather was good, I believe. The weather was great. I mean, the marathon itself for me was was not a good experience, but that's when I realized that if you're training for a race, any race, whether it's 26.2 miles or two miles, you have to enjoy the process. And I remember distinctly, even before we ran that race, there was another runner who was training on the Saturday before, the Friday before the marathon, she went out to walk her dog and tripped on the leash and broke her toe. Oh. So she didn't run the marathon, but I think in my conversation with her, because she showed up when we boarded the bus to go to New Jersey, I think she came. Like but she, Right, but she talked about the fact that she had so much fun during the training that not that it didn't matter that she didn't run the marathon, but she still appreciated everything that she gained during that time. And so that gave me an appreciation to but every time you show up, enjoy the moment. I struggled in the marathon, and I think it's the, re the, the time that I realized 
we got to 13 miles, and then there was someone at that mile mark that said, marathoners go left, half marathoners go right. And I said, wait a minute. Nobody told me I could do a half marathon. I'd be <laughs> done in 13.1 miles. But I did struggle. Um, there are lots of things that I learned post my first marathon. But what I appreciated on that first marathon, by the time I got to the finish line, the finish line was dismantled. All the other marathoners had, many of them had showered and changed, but everyone was at that finish line waiting for me. Coach Ramon had my medal and my pen, and I had my personal cheering squad. So that again helped me to appreciate, you know, it was a grueling 26.2 miles. But every step along the way was such joy, you know, not the marathon day per se, but the months of training, the struggles, but the the victories, and it's a small victory. The fact that we met up after long runs and shared pizza or whatever that celebration was at the end of running. But the, the, the marathon day to see that everyone waited, everyone waited, um, made me, you know, very proud of my first marathon and my first accomplishment in running. I'd never done this before. Oh, <laughs> like we said, you went from zero to 26.2. Zero to 26.2. But in a way, but some, sometimes they do a little 5K yes. and so forth. So you probably did your first 5K. But probably the marathon was the, probably the longest run you ever did before the marathon. It was the only miles. run I did before anything. So it was really an ambitious... Right. Uh, like, you know, that was the Long Branch yes. uh, marathon. And the, the race director was great, the Art Castellano. Yes. And he had a great saying about the marathon that really applies, I think, in our situation. He said, it's not about your finish time that matters. The kind of time you yes, have finish. It. Yes. So it isn't about the competition. It's more about the 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 friendship and the camaraderie. Yes. And to be part of a community. Yes. And I remember after the marathon, so we had a dinner or whatever. And yes. Ramon get, gathered a lot of bunch of people. You were there, I was there. And Ramon, I guess, did a post modern interview. This is before Gotta Run it even existed. Yeah. And I never forgot what you said, what you'd learn from doing the marathon. And you said that you finally learn patience. Yeah. You learn to be patient with people. Isn't that amazing? I met so many different people and different types of people during that training. And like I mentioned to you, being a back of the pack, I remember on most days, especially when we did our trail runs, which I loved, but I was almost always the last person coming in. Nobody seemed annoyed. Nobody seemed frustrated that I, here she goes again. People waited and they cheered when I came in. And it taught me not only uh, things about other people, but things about myself in terms of the humility. I think many People I learned about their professions, you know, there were doctors, there were lawyers, there were teachers, there were so many different people in that running group. But at the end of the day, it was all of us in this, our running shoes, our running gear, that just, uh, you know, the attorney was not the brightest runner, mm -hmm. you know, so we really just kind of a great equalizer. And you're absolutely right. It, it taught me to be patient with myself and to be patient with others. And you're right because, because as a group, we ran, they call it conversational pace. Yes. So you can keep, everybody's different, but they said, okay, run conversational pace. For some people, that's 10 minutes a mile. Yeah. For some people, 16 minutes a mile and in between. And that's where you learn about people. Yeah. And, and what was so interesting about talking to other people, you're right, you know, you you learned about their profession, what they liked, what movies they liked, what TV shows we were watching. And and one of the things that never came up, at least in, in my, you know, politics never came up, you know. We didn't know who was voting for whom. Right. So, we, so we, you know, we knew The Sopranos was a good show. Yes. We knew about the odd couple. Yes. Or we knew where to eat 
oh, we knew where to get the best shoes. We had to, and we talk about clothing. Even you guys did. talk about clothing. It's the only time guys talked about clothing they were <laughs> running because they were interested yeah. about shorts and, and, and comfortable stuff. Now, let's take a jump. You, you finished the marathon. And you, had to, you needed to decide with some people said, well, do I want to continue or just yeah. one and done? But was it one and done for you? <laughs> well, it was going to be a one and done for me what? until you. Um, I remember distinctly you said to me, well, you know, um, I run with this other group. And we're meeting on Wednesday. And I was like, please don't talk to me about running again. But you were so nice to me during my training with team and training. And I remember sometimes, even though you were not my mentor, when I would fall behind, you would fall back. And I wasn't a talker, but you chatted with me and you, you were so patient with me. And oftentimes you would linger back just to make sure that I had company. I think after that first time I got lost in the park, somebody decided this is not going to happen again. But I distinctly remember you inviting me to a Galloway meetup that following Wednesday. And I was polite to you and I said, sure. But when I walked off, I said, I'm not going anywhere. But then Tuesday came and I said, you know, Will has always, you know, even in my frustration, um, he's been so kind and I'll be respectful and I will attend the meeting that you invited me to. 19 years later, this is where I am. Amazing, because yeah. Jeff Galloway, he's charismatic. Yeah. <laughs> he talked about the walk run. I said, nobody told me you could walk through the marathon. But getting to Galloway that day, I, I'm a person, I'm very practical in my approach to many things. Either it makes sense or it doesn't. Uh, running with team and training for me, it was I made a commitment and I'm going to finish what I started. Getting to Galloway was like, son of a gun. It made sense. And so team and training got me running, but Galloway kept me running. And I so appreciate you for that introduction to Galloway and to, um, you know, I've never stopped. 19 years I, later. All this time as a member of, yes. of the Galloway yes. running team. Yeah. Well, we should, we should uh, for people that know, the Galloway running team is unique. Very unique. Uh, they use the, the walk run ratio. Yes. Jeff Galloway popularized. Yes. Back then, just walk for a minute and then run for three. Yeah. Or something like we that. We were in two one. When I started, I was, was in two, two one. one. Yeah, I but did two one. Nowadays, minutes. has changed. Yeah. And the, the idea is when you're walking, you're, you're, you're relieving your muscles. Yeah. You're, you're relieving the stress. Yeah. You, you're less prone to injury. And it works very well, you discover. Yeah, and so I've never had an injury. I really have run injury-free, um, you know, but showing up for gallery. So when I ran with team and training, it was like, these are the nicest people on the face of the earth, you know, the runners, the mentors, the, the, the coaches. And then I got to gallery, and I could never imagine that they were nicer people. And then I realized runners are just a special group of people. It, it's just a different breed. And like I said, over the years, I have met so many dynamic people who, till this day, you know, Ruth Gursky, who was the first person you introduced me to at Galloway, uh, we're still running buddies today. I you know, know, I know. I was looking at the photos last night. Yeah. Half of them is you and Ruth. Yeah. And Ruth Gersky, yeah. And then so many people along the way that I've met and have kept uh, friendships where people come in and they, you know, stop running or, you know, they come in and leave, they come in. But the friendships that I have developed over the years, long term friendships with so many people, even if we're not running together. Yeah that we've kept a, a, a camaraderie, you know. Well, after every run, of course, we yes. go and eat. Usually early in the morning, so it's breakfast time. <laughs> yes, and that's the reason we run. Yeah. Also, one of the things I remember about your uniqueness with the, uh, the gallery running team, uh, occasionally we all volunteer to do an aid station, yeah. especially doing the long runs, and people are going to run you know, for a long time. 
and they're not necessarily going to get enough nourishment then. So many of the teams have an aid station or for the long runs. And if we remember your first, the one you did was the yeah. peak because you introduced to us the mango. Yes. We thought we called mangoes because, yes. you know, it was the watermelons, yes. oranges, but you had mangoes. What inspired you to introduce mangoes to the tree? So first to begin, I love mangoes. And I felt that um, having a cold piece of mango, and yes, we're used to watermelons and oranges, but there's something about the content and the nutritional uh, sustenance that you get from a piece of mango. And I remember one run where I had, uh, maybe at about mile 10, we were doing a half marathon. I had a piece of mango and it was like an injection that gave me so much energy. And I said, well, first to begin, you know, if I'm doing the A station, it's going to be unique. So I decided that, you know, change it up a little bit. So I had mangoes and I had a uh, uh, cold washcloths that people could, oh, yes, refresh oh. themselves. Yes, yes. So uh, the mango thing was because I had a piece of mango that just gave me a, a, a you know, a little boost. <laughs> but now, I think the A stations are now even customized. People can put a request in. Yes. Oh, I <laughs> my, my blue Gatorade. You know, thank goodness. Coconut Gatorade. We're very special and very spoiled in Galloway. But again, uh, you wouldn't imagine, too, that um, runners who volunteer to man the aid station and do it with such, you know, you get to the aid station, and it's more than just the fuel that is here. It's really a sense of care. You know, you do have your your goo or your, you know, your Vaseline, but literally, as you said, over the years, it got to the point of, What's going to encourage you to run 10 more miles, especially in a long run? Uh, you encourage runners to take with them what they need. But the notion of an aid station with runners who volunteer their time, maybe they run on a Friday so they are available to uh, man the aid station on Saturday or they man the aid station on Saturday and run on Sunday. But just showing up with a smile and showing up with, exactly what you need to get you through it's a very very special group of individuals and the thoughtfulness that goes into uh, the leadership of the the running crew Galloway has had, had great leadership amazing Priscilla was our Priscilla first Priscilla was our oh, first Galloway. yes yeah it was great and then and the most recently Joel who's retired yes He's a full-time principal now. Yes, he is. You know, he's running a whole different kind of race now. Yeah, plus he has a young son. Yes. He's becoming a teenager. Yes, yes. Oh, you know, we forgot to mention one of the one of the things that all the groups does. You know, you mentioned, you know, the, the friendships and the camaraderie and the breakfasts. All the groups are similar in that way. Yeah. So Galloway is unique in the sense that we follow the, the walk run race. Yes. I think Galloway best described us as we're a social club with a running club. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I confess. <laughs> uh, but uh, but also the awards. You know, oh, the yes. Years. But one of the things that we introduced a few years ago, in honor of Joy Johnson, who yeah. was a one walker and a Jeff Galloway protege, we established the Joy Johnson Spirit Award after she passed away. Yeah. And it's been going on now for at least eight years. But you're the most recent recipient. Yes. The 2022 recipient. Yes. Of George Johnson Spirit Award. Totally surprised. And I remember distinctly. So I've run four New York City marathons. I've run a total of 13 marathons. But I remember it was my second uh, New York City marathon that I took the bus, the Galloway bus. We were always very rowdy on the bus, you know, you again, you show up at Park Plaza at four o'clock in the morning, the bus arrives and there's just the joy of being on the bus with your fellow runners. But there was this woman like just sitting so humbly towards the back of the bus, not directly in the back, but just sitting there, just soaking it all in. And I remember distinctly you know, watching her and thinking, you know, she's getting into the zone. I didn't know who she was at the time, 
And so I sat close to her and we engaged in a conversation. And she shared that it was her 20 or so, some high number of, you know, marathon that she was running, but very soft-spoken and very, like I said, humble. And I admired her that was amongst all the chaos that she was centered. Fast forward, who knew? You know, um, you know, of her passing, that was a sad. So that was picture. how you met Joy Johnson. That was how I met Joy Johnson. But never would I imagine that I would be the recipient of the Joy Johnson, Johnson Award. Right. Yeah. Joy Johnson didn't have to take that bus yeah. because of both of her age and because of her her, her streak. Eventually, she ran at least twenty five meters. Yeah. She was entitled to go on the elite bus. Wow. But she always wanted to come on the Galloway bus. That's very really fun, right? Because she wanted to be with yeah, her people. Yeah. <laughs> and it was such a pleasure meeting her. And fast forward, you know, um, I showed up late for that particular, um, uh, you know, uh, end of year party that we had. And so no one told me. Um, I worked late that night, but I decided again, you know, I have to go. And so I was just, again, so humbled, but so appreciative of the fact that my fellow runners recognized me in that way, in that moment. I'm, I'm, I'm a Galloweyan through and through. Well, <laughs> they give you a nice frame. Well, frame it is. It's in my office. Off very proud. Mark. Yes, very proudly displayed. Many people at my job know that I'm a runner, and I always appreciate too. Not only my running family, but my work family. You, you know the deal. You run the marathon on Sunday. You're entitled to wear your medal on Monday. I wear my medal all week the following week. But I'm I'm proud that you know I'm not a perfect runner. I think I I cheer on and I I you know root for the underdog. I root for the back of the packers. And when I'm not running, I love being on the sidelines. Last year I didn't run the marathon uh, for a stupid reason, but. Um, I had promised to run along with my new coach, with Galena, and um, I committed to saying that I would run with her. So unofficially, you know, I got in at mile uh, 16 and ran with her the last 10 miles. You know, we're back in the pack, so we're running in the dark. We're in Harlem on the flash, uh, in, in the Bronx on the flashlight. Yeah. But it was such an amazing experience, again, to, you know, if you're not running, you get out there and you cheer. You know, I worked at the, the Galloway 8th station, and when she came by at about 4 o'clock in the evening, I just got in there with her to offer that support. But um, I've been supported so many times, you know, running the New York City Marathon. Somebody has waited for me at my 14. My go-to is a, I just need a quarter of a bagel with peanut butter and some Coke. And I've had that customized for me on many occasions. So whatever I can do to help fellow runners, you know, my yeah. fellow runners, yeah. Now, for 2023, are you going to be, are you going to do the New York City Marathon? Are you in training? So I didn't. Um, so I didn't do the nine plus one, but I always put my hat in the ring. With uh, Galloway has a, a lottery, you know, if, if they get uh, bibs, okay. and so my hat is in the, you know, the oh, okay. ring for the right. for the right. bib. That's, so I always that's right. train. That's my other trick. I always train for a marathon regardless of if I'm registered or not. Just in case a marathon breaks Just the next in day case. or the next week or but next weekend. It's the reason I wake up on a Saturday morning if I'm not training like what am I going to do? <laughs> so I'm always in training. Train, always yeah. For the last 19 yes. plus years yes. ever since you you decided to respond to that postcard. To that po And that pressure of you saying well you know, we're meeting this on Wednesday. I don't know what the Wednesday. <laughs> it was a Tuesday. It was a Wednesday. You know, yeah. I think the secret was after you turned up, of course, Jeff Galloway, he's uh, he's a very charismatic. Yes. Tells you about the program, and Priscilla was there, I'm sure. But the real person, I think that kept you going is Ruth. Ruth, my co Ruth. And she has been an angel, you know, Ruth is a special kind of person, but she's a special friend. And I remember I, I took a spill in Prospect Park. A spill? I, I fell, but I think to, it was 2004, right after I'd finished the New Jersey Marathon. It wasn't a bad fall, but 
I did sustain a slight injury, and so I stopped running for a while. And I got an email every week. Are you going to come? Are you going to come? Are you going to come? Me. That was rude. And then I said, you know, if I don't go, this woman is not going to stop. So I went back, and then I've never missed a training year since then. But she's been a really big supporter. She's been a good personal coach. She has good advice. She has, she's so understanding and so supportive sometimes when you're young. But I also remember miles and miles of running. Ruth and I have conversations about everything. I'm sure you solved the world problems a few times over. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely, but well, it, listen. On that positive note, Ruth Gursky, yes, and Michelle Patterson. Patterson. Oh, you know, one last story. Uh huh. Your your name is spelled a little differently than <laughs> slightly than the usual different. Michelle. Yes, slightly different. A lot of different. people when they see you, they bib. They call you M. Shell. Yes, like yes. So your name is spelled M apostrophe S H E L L. What's the story behind the spelling? So if you look at the word Michelle, if you look at the word M I C H E L L E, all dictionary words has a phonetic pronunciation. So it tells you how to say the word. And the M I C H E L L E is Michelle. Not Michelle, it's Michelle. Michelle. Soft M shell. And so my name is spelled phonetically. M S H E L. So I've gotten many variations. I've gotten M shell, Miss Hell, um, all kinds of things. I've stopped correcting people, but either way, I take it with love. So, um, so that's the backstory. It's the phonetic spelling of the traditional Michelle. All right, this <laughs> we saw. Thank you so much for coming here. Thanks for having me. This was fun, and um, I just want to say thank you for you for being my friend over the years and for introducing me to your wonderful wife, Monica, uh, who I think, you know, when I see her and we show up, you know, she's been a friend as well. But um, you have been a special friend to me over the years and I always keep you in my heart. You're always part of my conversation when somebody says, how did you end up running? Blame it on Will and Ruth. <laughs> <laughs> Guilty as charged. Uh, pleasure. Yeah, to have you on the team. Wow, that's that is that is so heartwarming. Yeah, thank, thank you, you so for having. Yeah. Uh, thank you for having me. Right, great. Right.